every dream, every word, everything that you, every promise, God, we receive it right now. Speak, Lord. Our hearts are ready. Our ears are open. Our spirit is sensitive to you, God. We receive it like a flood today, God. We receive your word in Jesus' name. Come on, church, give God your best praise. Come on. Amen. So, so there was, I felt like the best praise was coming a lot from over here. But, but here, check it out. When, when I'm up here and I'm praying, we're interceding together, we're declaring some things, and I, and I say, come on, let's give it some praise. Hey, church, that's not transition. That's not, oh, yeah, it's transition time. We're, we're moving on. I think sometimes we get in a routine, and it's like, man, this is your opportunity to give God the glory, the honor, the praise that he is worthy of. Come on, give him your best praise, church. Come on. Hallelujah. We worship you, God, King of kings and Lord of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God, man. That's how we do it, all right? I come up here, I'm, we say give God your best. You give God your best. No patty cake God, all right? Amen. We want to welcome you to Discovery Church if you're new. You should have got some things that you came in. That welcome card will kind of orient you to help connect you and your family to the church. Hey, before you are seated, though, do me a favor. Just by way of, like, agreement, I want you to speak the agreement. Turn to somebody in your aisle, across from the aisle, shake their hand, and tell them this. Tell them, I'm ready. Come on. Come on. Turn to someone. I'm ready. I'm ready. Tell them, I'm ready. Listen, church, God is speaking. He is, ab he is a communicating God. He is a God who likes to speak and desires to speak into your life. And there's, there is a persuasion of thought or theology that says, that I just want to point out, that, that God has stopped speaking. That when the apostles died, he stopped speaking. But I just, I just want you to know, we don't believe that. That's not true. That our God is a speaking God. Our God is a communicating God. And he desires to communicate to you. Listen, if God doesn't speak today, then the greatest disservice that we could do is tell people that they could have a personal relationship with God. Isn't that true? The greatest disservice that I could do as a pastor is to tell you that you can have a personal and intimate relationship with God when he can't speak to you. I mean, that would be, that would be the greatest, but you need to know that God desires and he's always planned to have this intimate and personal relationship with you. Let me show you something. Not in your notes. I want you to write it down. Exodus chapter 20, verse 18 and 19. This is where Moses is on Mount Sinai, and he's given the Ten Commandments. And you guys know the scene there with the thunder and the smoke and the lightning. and the, It was just, a, just a, a crazy, awesome atmosphere with God's presence. It says, when the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain and smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance. And see, that's what so many people do, even in the body of Christ, even Christians. Instead of drawing near to the presence of God because of fear of what he will do, what he will say, what he will demand, what is it like, what, maybe I'm not good enough, for whatever, a lot of different reasons, we stay at a distance from the voice of God. They said they stayed at a distance and said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen. But look at this. But do not have God speak to us or we'll die. See, in this moment right here, the people chose rules over relationship. They chose, and, 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 and they, oh, it's just too, it's too much, it's too scary. I think we'll say, Moses, why don't you just tell us what to do? 
Moses, why don't you just give us the do's and the don'ts? Give us the boundaries. Just give us the list, Moses. We'll stay back here. And it was always God's design and intention to be intimate and be personable. Right here is where the Israelites decided we're going to stay away from the voice. And it's easier. You know why? Because it is. It's easier to live by, rela- by rules than relationships. Right when I know the boundaries and I know the do's and the don'ts, and the one, give me just the list of the things I can know. Don't do this, do that. It's almost easier. Right? I mean, let me illustrate it. One person in church, they can't have any TVs in their house because God told them no. But your best friends in church have five TVs in their house. What's going on with that? You think, well, I mean, come on, can't you just say, God tell us, yes TV, no TV, what's going on? No, no, God says no. Say yes to relationship, and I'll tell you how to live it out. Okay, so one person in church, they, they, they enter a season where they are giving everything away. That's what they're supposed to do in that season. God's called them to just give everything they give away, give it away. And another person in the same church, a buddy, is start a savings account. Okay, I mean, we, would, we, want, we want God to go, okay, God, just tell us yes to the saving or no to the saving. Yes to giving it away, no to giving it away. Yes to TV or no to TV. What do you, just give us, and God is saying, no, no, no. That's not the key. The key isn't the rules of yes and no. The key, listen, the key is the voice of God. That's the key. See, it was always God's design and intention to lead you through life by voice that your specific circumstance, your specific situation in this season of your life, God has something to say. He has something to say. And although it would be easier just to go off a list, God wants to speak to you, church. He really does. And I believe you do. I believe you want that. The the very third verse in the Bible, and God said, right? In in, in Revelation, it actually says that, that let him hear. Who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. See, God was always, he was always wanting to make that known to you, what his will is and what the Spirit of God is saying. Jesus said that our relationship with him would be like that of a relationship of a shepherd and sheep. Let me, let me show it to you. John chapter 10, verse 3 through 5. This is going to be our theme verse where we're going to stay for this series, and we're just going to kind of open up this concept of how to hear God's voice in a journey, step at a time, and getting closer and closer to the voice of God. Man, I'm telling you, it's going to take your relationship with God to a whole nother level. It, let me say it this way. It's going to take it to where it was always designed to be, okay? John 10. Jesus says the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. They don't stay distant. They draw near. Listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name. You see, he makes it personal. He wants to make it personal with you by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them. So he's in front of you, designing to lead you with, hey, this is the way, walk in it kind of God. He wants to lead you through life. And his sheep follow him because they know his voice. They know it. They've grown accustomed to the shepherd. And that's what we're going to do in this series. I'm going to show you how to tune into his voice and also, you know, to discern his voice. Is that God leading? Is that God speaking? But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. So they've even recognized how to tune out the stranger's voice. Now, I believe I believe so strongly, church, that God wants to speak to you. In fact, some of the most pivotal and defining moments of my life, of my walk with Jesus and my faith, were not moments, as I look back in my memories, they were not moments of what God did for me. Don't get me wrong, God has done a lot for me, and I'm so thankful and filled with gratitude. But my pivotal moments, as I look back and I reflect, it's what stands apart is not what God has done for me, but it's what God has spoken to me. That's what stands apart. That I know, I know, I know, I heard from God in that situation, in that season. There were just pivotal moments in my life where I just know. Uh, there were almost times where, where I don't think I've ever heard the audible voice of God, but there were times where there was so loud in me that I felt like that was almost audible. Like, like God, I know God told me to marry Veronica. I know he did. I know he said, this is the mate for you. I know it. And I, that's why I asked her, if, if you would have said no, then I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have said yes. I wouldn't have asked her to. I know it. When I joined the military, I was a Navy corpsman. God, God told me. I felt it so. I didn't want to join the military. I was a hard-headed young punk, okay? I didn't want to join the military, but God told me. I heard him. You got issues, kid. 
Seriously, and then he lined out some of my issues. I'm not going to tell you what they were, but there were some issues. Okay, I'm just telling you. I had some issues, and God said, that needs to be broken and beaten out of you. Okay, so that's, I, so, oh, yes, Lord. I know that I was taking a step of faith, even when I was in the military, and we were doing the first Iraqi war push, and uh, the Lord spoke to me then and said, I'm going to use you in the desert. And I knew, I knew that God, that, uh, and they were like, you know, some of you are going to have to go, and everyone's all afraid who's going to go, and here I am stepping forward. Okay, hey, here I am. Send me. And God, you, and it was beautiful what God did in the Kuwaiti and Iraqi desert. So many people got saved. Why? Just because of the voice of God. I heard the voice of God. When God called me into ministry, I was, I was, I heard from God. I heard from God. I'm telling you, I was trying to be a physician assistant, going to school to be a PA. And I thought, I'll be bivocational. You know, I could do that, right? You could do that. You could be a pastor. Which, by the way, can I just say, your job is your ministry. Your, your home is your ministry. Your neighborhood is your ministry. Your marketplace is your ministry. Every one of you have ministry right where you are. You are called by God to be a minister right where you are. Now, your story is not my story. I'm just saying I knew that I was hiding, and God called me into full-time ministry to do what I'm even doing today. And he, and he, and he spoke to me, and I heard it. And he just, it was a question. And all he said was, are you mine? And it breaks me today. Because I knew that word was, I knew I was hiding. There was a part of me that wasn't his. I just knew it. And I said, okay, God, here I am. Send me. I'm, I'm all in, God. I'm all yours, God. Even Discovery, the, the Discovery Church started because the voice of God. Some of you guys know the story. I was in traffic here in Southwest Bakersfield years ago, many years ago, and I was frustrated in traffic at that. Have you ever been at the red light? You're far enough back, and it turns green. And the dang car up front ain't going. How you know what I'm talking about? I know he's on his phone. I know he's on. Look up, look up, look up. And then, and I know I'm like, I'm far enough back to go, I'm getting caught at this light. I know it. I know it. God, you're going to do it. You're going to do it to me. And sure enough, I get caught. I'm the last one. I'm like, dang it. And I'm all frustrated. And I'm just, and I'm in that frustrated moment looking around. Just, man, this Southwest is blowing up, man. What's up? What's it? And I look around and the Lord spoke to me and said, you're going to pastor some of these people in traffic. And I just started weeping right there in the car, sobbing just at, at the voice that told me and gave me an assignment. And the guy next to me looks over at me sobbing like uh, hysterically snot. It wasn't pretty, snot, slob. And I'm just, he's looking like, what's going on? I'm like, I'm going to pastor you one day, man. You don't even know. <laughs> but it's the voice. And I know, I know you want to hear from God. I know you want his voice to lead you. But listen, I'm gonna, I need to show you why maybe you're not hearing his voice clearly. Because God is speaking. He's speaking. But we're not listening. Something's going, something, something's, the frequency's wrong. Something's off here that, that, that I, I need to identify and help you identify why this personal, intimate relationship isn't as personal and intimate as it could be to where you're hearing the voice and the impression of the Holy Spirit leads you. The voice of the shepherd ahead of you saying, this is the way. Go in it. Okay? I'm, the title of today's message is called, The Weapons of mass distraction. There are some weapons of mass distraction in our culture that the enemy has so subtly and craftily used to get, to not, look, the devil can't destroy you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You're covered by the blood of Jesus. But what he can do and has done, I would say successfully, is he has distracted us from the, pre, from, from the, the purposes, from the will, from the voice of God. So take some notes with me. If you're taking some guys, take some notes. With me. If you're not taking notes today, write these down. All right, here's number one. <laughs> Get you to take some notes. Here's number one. The first weapon of mass distraction is busyness. Busyness. We're just so busy. This is chronic in our culture, right? We're just so busy. Our kids are so busy. You're, you're, they're, you're just, it's just scheduled. It's too busy. Your thoughts in mind, there's no margin. There's no space. You're constantly on it's just so busy. It's hard to build a relationship with anybody when you're that busy. Anybody. You've got to take time and separate time. We're just, this is something in our culture that's just been norm. It's been norm. And it's drowning out the voice of God in our lives, church. Psalm chapter 127, verse 2 says, It is senseless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night. Just just constantly scheduled from morning to night, just busy. It's, a, it's, a, it's one of the enemy's tools to distract you 
from the voice of God to lead you in every season. Here's the second weapon of mass distraction. Write it down. And that's competing voices. Competing voices. In other words, God could be yelling at you. <laughs> but you, you got a hundred other things yelling at you. You can't distinguish anything. You don't know what God's saying because there's so many competing voices bombarding you. You can't distinguish the shepherd who's trying to lead and guide you by the still small voice at that. Have you ever been to a football game? Like a stadium football game when it's like hype and roaring and the crowd is crazy. They're on the goal line kind of thing. You can't hear two people over, right? Two people. It's just there's so many competing voices. You take that same football stadium. Because of its bowl shape, you can actually carry a conversation from this side of the stadium to that side of the stadium. Almost at normal tone. Why? Because there's no competing voices. What would it look like? What, what would it just look like if we just identified that? Jesus tried, he often tried to reach people, but, and they, they would make excuses often. And they would say, oh, I'd like, oh, I like you, Jesus, but I got this going on, and then I got this, and I got this. And let me show you one time in the Bible, Luke 14, that happened. It says, but they all alike began to make what? Excuses. Excuses. I got, I'm busy, I'm busy. The first said, man, I'd love to follow you and listen to you, Jesus, but I've just bought a field. You know, I got this financial situation, this financial commitment. I got to take care of these. I must, I got to go see it. Please excuse me. And another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen. So I'm a farmer. It's my career. It's my livelihood. I got some things to take care of in my job, in my career. I mean, I want to, Jesus. I'd love to listen, but I got, I'm busy with my career right now, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. And still another said, yeah, I'd like to, but I got some I got some relationships, man. I got some people that I need, to, I need to spend some time with. I just got married, so I can't come. The point is this. There's always going to be excuse if you look for one. There will always be an excuse when you look for one. But what would it be like if we just stopped and paused in this season and we, and we identified the competing voices against God? And what if we not only identified them, but we tried to eliminate some of them from our life? And you know, some of them need to be some of them need to be restricted. Some competing voices you cannot eliminate, okay? Short of murder or something, okay? So you don't don't go doing that. But just some you get, you can restrict some competing competing voices, or some just need to be eliminated. In every one of us, I'm challenging you to identify the competing voices that is a weapon of mass distraction, where God is speaking, but he can't get through the chatter that you're inundated with, the, com the competition that of information that you, are in that you are inundated with. What would it be like if we just identified it, eliminated it? I tell you, if we would do that, every one of us here would probably on our list would be, somewhere on our list would be technology. Technology would be like, how many of you just love your phone? Come on, admit it. I love my phone. Come on, I just say it's a great thing. It's a great thing, right? So you guys are on it all the time, and I use it for everything. I, I communicate on it. I've got emails and texts, and I'm constantly communicating. It's one of the main things I do as a pastor is communicate, constantly communicating to people. It's, it's you know, my task management is on there. My project management software is on there. It's, it's you know, my social media. How many of you know Social media is on there. It's like, and I'll be honest with you. I hate the red notifications. I just hate them. They need to be gone, all right? So it's like, okay, God, I'm going to spend time with you, but I got to get rid of these, these notifications, okay? I got I to I gotta clear out. These, they're just competing voices, you guys. They're competing. It's a weapon of mass distraction. Here's the last one, and that's an unprepared heart, an unprepared heart. We're going to talk more about this in the series. Actually, next week, I'm going to spend a whole week talking about the prepared heart atmosphere, the prepared heart, such an important uh, message in the series, you guys. I'm going to spend a whole week on it. I, I, is my heart really prepared to meet with God? Am I ready to meet with God? It's actually something that's a good discipline before you even come to Sunday to prepare your heart to meet with God, like to, like to deal with, a, like to bring to God some of those things and go, you know what, I'm going to deal with that right now. I'm going to bring it before you, God, and move that distraction out of the way so I can come in here and receive everything that you have for me. That's a good discipline, an unprepared heart. Jesus talks about it in Matthew 13, 19. He says, when anyone hears news of the kingdom and doesn't take it in, it just remains on the surface. So it just, the seed just, it's not penetrating the soil of a heart. It's, it's, it's like if I threw seed on the concrete here, and you can come back in a month, nothing's going to happen. It's not penetrating. But if you put it in good soil, you come back sometimes in days and you see 
already something being produced from that. But when it's on the surface, he said, it's easy for the devil. He says the evil one, the devil constantly trying to pluck away the word, the voice of God, the will of God, the direction he's trying to give you, the seed of God, pluck it away from your heart. So if you want to hear in your body, you say, okay, Jason, yeah, I hear you. Like, I'm supposed to have a personal, intimate relationship with God. And if you're bought into that, and you want to learn how, how to hear God's voice, then you need to identify and eliminate these weapons of mass distraction, busyness, competing voices, the, the unprepared heart. When I talk about that, I'll show you. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7. tells us this, this way. Let's make a clean break, Discovery. Come on, I'm, I'm just challenging you. Discovery Church, let's make a clean break with everything that defiles and distracts us from God. Come on, church. We need to hone in. We need to realign, refocus, get back in step, in rhythm. Everything that defiles and distracts us from God. Both within, that's my heart, and without, that's the social media, YouTube, television, that's all that stuff. All that. Let's make our entire lives fit and holy temples for the worship of God. So I need to figure out how to, you know, a way to get my life postured. To get it fit and holy and not wholly perfect, holy postured, holy separated. That's what that's what, to be ready, postured for God to move and God to speak. Now, I want to illustrate this a very unique way today, and I want everyone to play along with me. Will everyone play, play along with me in this illustration? Can I get everyone to stand up out of your seats? Everyone just stand up out of your seat. Play along with me today. It's going to be fun. I promise you. I'm not going to have you stand for too long. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to play a sound wave, a frequency wave, through these speakers. And only some of you are going to be able to hear it, okay? And, and when, if you hear it, and if you can hear it, what I want you to do is just sit down. Just sit down. And if you can't, stay standing. Now, don't cheat. Don't be like, oh, they're sitting there. Okay. And just like, <laughs> don't cheat. You're going to ruin it. I just, I, let's, let's, so if you, if you hear it, when you hear it, take a seat. If you don't, just stay standing. Go ahead. Come on, I don't freak you out. Everyone's standing up right now. You're like, what is going on right now, right? <laughs> what is being played right now is 17.4 kilohertz. It's called a mosquito, mosquito signal. It's a very high pitch. And these young people down here are going, ah, <laughs> because it's, it's youthful ears. Everyone can hear this. Everyone used to be able to hear this. But damage has been done. They say at about 40 years age. So basically, you st you're standing with me? We're old. Okay, that's it. <laughs> All right, have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. But, but that frequency, for a lot of people, they were going, oh, my gosh, stop, stop. And, and it's 17.4 for you. Listen, that, this works so well. I'm not making this, making this up. There was this posh, you know, retailer in London. There was a higher-end posh kind of store. And, and they were having teenagers hang out out front, skateboarding and stuff like that, like scaring off all their uppity up kind of posh customers, and they hired the Scottish security firm. The guy's name was Howard Stapleton. You can look it up. They hired this guy, Scottish security firm. His name was Howard Stapleton to come and help it out. And what he invented is what you heard, the mosquito teen repellent. That's what he called it. I'm serious. So what he did is he put speakers out in the courtyard, and he it was just at a constant on frequency, 17.4 uh, kilohertz, and, and, and the posh shopper, shoppers who were kind of, their, their ears had already been damaged, just shopping around like, you know, thing, like whatever. <laughs> and all the people, all the kids, the teenagers skateboarding were like, oh, my God, and they ran away. And it worked. <laughs> and I'm not, and, and now that these, these young teens, they're now using it against us, you guys. They're, they actually have made a ringtone, a mosquito ringtone, so that Texan rings, the teacher can't hear it, and your adults can't hear it. And they're getting, <laughs> some of you kids are like, like writing stuff down. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I'm giving them ideas and stuff, but what's interesting, uh, fr from a spiritual standpoint, listen, the sound was there. The sound was there, and listen, every one of us was able at one point in time to hear that frequency. You see, we have, we have become accustomed to tuning out the voice of God. Life, distraction, damage done to us. We have tuned, we have just become accustomed to tuning out the voice of God. And what's interesting is that Jesus said, unless you become like a little what? Like a little child, you can't enter the kingdom of God. 
Now, I, I don't think, I really don't think he was talking about going to heaven. I think Jesus was saying, you can't have the kingdom. Like, you can't have access to all the good things that I have for you unless you become like one of these little ones, the state of innocence, simplicity, faithfulness, like that of a little child. And the beautiful part about this illustration, you guys, is that no matter how far you are, no matter how much damage has been done, no matter how much distraction is there, no matter how old or how young, it's never too late to return back to that state of a childlike state. It's never too late to be born again. You can tune your heart back to God and say, God, I want to dream again. God, I want to trust you again. God, I want to believe again. I want to hear you again. And God, I am just passionate enough to get the junk out of my life to know you again. God, I want to know you again. I want to encourage you today to get back to that place of innocence and that childlike faith and say, God, I want to hear you again. Let me, let me share with you an Old Testament story in the Bible, 1 Samuel chapter 3. You got maybe one scripture. I'm going to read you the whole story up here on the slides. Verse 1 through 11. This is a time in the Old Testament where God actually spoke to someone. He actually, the, the young person could hear the voice of God and the older prophet could not hear the voice of God. And I'm not picking on old people. I couldn't hear it either, guys. I'm so, so whatever, all right? 1 Samuel chapter 3. This is a great story. 1 Samuel chapter 3. It says, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under a mentor. It was another prophet, Eli. In those days, watch this, the word of the Lord was rare. That word in the Hebrew wasn't just like rare as you think rare. That means valuable precious okay that's what the writer is saying that there were not many visions so they weren't dreaming anymore they weren't dreaming one night Eli whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see was lying down his usual place watch where Samuel was the lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was and that's where the Lord called him if I have some time I'm gonna explain those that, that to you Samuel answered here I am and he ran to Eli and said here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I didn't call you, go back and lie down. So when he went and lie down, again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, did you call me? My son, Eli said, I didn't call you, go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. So Samuel was hearing from God, but he was not accustomed to the voice of the shepherd yet. He didn't know, it's still strange to him like it is for so many people. A third time the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, did you call me? Then Eli realized finally that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, and here's what I want you to say, church, man. I want you to be able to say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. If you, if you don't get anything else other than that prayer right there today, you're closer to hearing the voice of God. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. I'm going to show you what it looks like to hear from me, he says. That if you want to hear from God, church, if you want to hear God's voice, you have to value his voice. You have to place this precious value because you know what? You make time for whatever you value. You will. You have to value his voice. I want to hear you, God. You're going to have to set a value on his voice. Let me give you some practical steps as we begin this journey of seeking the face, seeking the voice. Let me just give you some practical steps to work out this week, today even, work this out to draw closer to the voice of God. Okay? Take some notes. Write it down. This is where we got to start. Start here. Number one, you have to set an appointment. Okay, you value, whatever you value, you will make time for. So set an appointment, get the, in the right place at the right time. What's so crazy about this is we set appointments with people we don't even like. But we don't set an appointment with the most important person in the entire universe. You got to set an appointment. Look at Exodus chapter, chapter 19 with me. It says, the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and be ready. Hey, that's what we're doing, church. That's what we're doing together. We're, we're, we're getting ready to hear the voice of God together. Amen? 
He says, consecrate them. Make, make sure they're ready. Get them ready by the third day because the Lord, that day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of the people. As the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke and the voice of God answered him. Here's what you need to know, church. God set an appointment. God set an appointment. He said, here, I want you to do this on the first and second day. On the third day, I'm going to speak. He set an appointment with God's people. You need to set an appointment. When and where, a time and place you're going to hear from God. For me personally, it's the morning. I do nothing. I don't look at my phone. I don't answer my emails. I don't, I don't respond to texts. I don't go to social media before I have my time with God. And it even became earlier because I started working out with someone. And so I had to move it like an hour and a half earlier now. So how important is the voice of God in your life? How important is that intimate and personal relationship? You have to set a time and a place. It's so simple. Just do that. Date, time, place. You know why? Because God comes to a prepared atmosphere. God comes to a prepared atmosphere. The reason why God came today and he showed up, you know why? Because we prepared for it. That's why. What would you think if you came to church on Sunday and we weren't prepared? What would you think about that? Which some churches do. Some churches don't prepare. And they call it being led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't lead in chaos and disorder. Come on, somebody. You have to be prepared. What if you dropped your children off in children's ministry and there was no teachers? What if you came and there was just no greeters? There was no, there was everything. You, God comes to a prepared environment and simply saying it's not unspiritual to set an appointment with God. You'll find out. Once you set an appointment, you'll find out he's waiting for you already. He's waiting. So that's number one. Set an appointment. Here's the second thing you need to do. Be still and worship. Be still and worship. Okay, that, that comes right out of the Bible, Psalm 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. Almost today, you can't really, almost to say, you can't really know he is God unless you are still enough to know he's God. You got to get still and quiet. If you take an extra note, write this down. The quieter you become, the more you can hear. Hey, shh, shh, be still. The quieter you become the more you can hear. Second Chronicles 20 says, you will not need to fight. God says, you will not need to fight in this battle. That's a good word. Will you receive that word if you're in a battle today? It's a good word right here. If you're in a battle, you're fighting something today, God says, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. I wish I had time to preach that one, man. That's good. Position yourselves. Where was Samuel positioned? Remember, he was positioned by the ark, right? Or he was positioned near the lamp. By the ark in the house of the Lord. The lamp, the ark, the house of the Lord. The lamp, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The, light, the lamp is always a picture of the word. The word, the ark, the presence, the house, the body of Christ. You want to position yourself to receive a word from God, to hear his voice? The word, the presence, the body. The word, the presence, the body. Get in the right position. The word, the presence, the body. Come on, say it with me. The word, the presence, the body. One more time. The word. Oh, man, I'm gonna, I might have to preach that on, on prayer. I'm going to have to come back to that, you guys. We're going to move on. You want to position yourself and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. This is one of the hardest things for people to do is to be still and worship just the First, actually, in, later on in, in Chronicles, in chapter 20, God tells the king, Jehoshaphat, not to put the warriors out front. He sends the worship team ahead of the warriors. He says, look, your warriors aren't gonna, uh, even going to have to fight. Just, just lead with worship. Lead, the, lead, lead with worship, and I'll go before you. I'll fight this battle for you. The three armies that were encamped against Israel, it threw them into confusion. They killed each other. Hey, would it be all right if God fought your battle for you, church? Would that be okay if God be still? And worship. You know what the problem is? The problem is a lot of people jump right to the word of God. Reading. The most important thing you can do if you want to hear the voice of God, listen, is be still in worship. There's a place for that, for reading the word of God. There's a place. But not before. Listen, some people have a better relationship when they're with their Bible than they do with God. Ooh, come on somebody. Did that hurt? Don't twist my words either. Don't twist it because I, I believe in the word of God. Every time I say challenging things like that, it's people kind of, kind of, 
Don't twist it. Don't twist me. People have a better relationship with the church than they do with God. People have a better relationship with people than they do the person of the Holy Spirit who's supposed to be your best friend. Okay, look, none of these things, all these things are good and meant to be in your life, but only, only after this, it only makes sense if you are still enough to know God personally and intimately. It only makes sense unless you are intimately known by God, unless you know him intimately. I know people who, have a, who, who know the Bible so well and who don't know God at all. There's atheists who know the Bible better than some Christians and they don't know God. So here's first, be still and worship. Do it first. Set an appointment, be still and worship. And then, write it down, number three, pray and read. Then you get into God's word. Then you start communing with God and talking with God and letting him know your needs. Mark 1, 35, Jesus modeled this very early in the morning while it was still dark. Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place. Hey, your time, place, your date needs to be a solitary. Sunday, some of you, Sunday's your day. Oh, that's the day I give to God. No, it isn't. It's your hour you give to God, first of all. Okay, secondly, it's not, it can't be your solitary place where you hear the voice. It needs to be somewhere away from the competing voices and the distraction. Jesus modeled this for us. Psalm 119, 147 says, I rise before dawn and I cry for help. I put my hope in your word. I cry for help. That's prayer. I put my hope in your word. That's the word, prayer. In the Word. So let me, I'm going to tell you what to pray for and where to read. It might sound weird. I'm going to tell you exactly what to pray for and, and where to read, okay? All right, you ready? You ready? What to pray for? This is what you pray for. Whatever's on your heart. That's what you pray for. This will set you free in your prayer time. I'm telling you, just pray for whatever is on your heart. If your marriage is on your heart, pray. If your career is on your heart, pray. If your finances, if your health, if your, your kids, whatever it is that's on your heart, Pray, because God wants to speak to that place of your need. That's where, and if you don't speak to that, you're being dishonest before God, and it is a competing voice. That very need you have becomes the voice that is distracting you from the voice of God. So just pray whatever is on your heart. Now, let me tell you where to read. People ask me, all the time, where do I read? Where do I read? And what do I read? Where do I? Let me tell you where to read. Somewhere in the middle. That's where you read. Okay, I've read the cover the front, very, and I've memorized it, Holy Bible, it's good, but this is where you want to be. Open it up and read. If you want it, like a reading plan, that's good, that's good. Read the Gospels, read the New Testament, read the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can download the Bible app and do what I do, the one-year Bible reading plan. A little bit of the Old Testament, New Testament, Psalm, Proverbs, every day. And, and the point of reading, again, the point of reading is not to read, the point of reading is to hear the voice. So when you hear the voice, you stop. Because the Bible says that the truth, that, that you'll know the truth and the truth shall set you free, but not until it's had its way with you. So many of you hear the truth and you pass it over. You, 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 it's, like, it's like God's trying to speak to you, but you move on. And that truth isn't setting you free because you're not letting it have its way with you. If you hear the voice, stop. Pray. Anyway, so set an appointment. Be still and worship. And then pray and read. And here's the last one. That was the last one. I'm going to stretch you. I know I'm going to stretch you with this last one. It's very practical, but I know it's something that a lot of you don't do. Okay, here it is. Number four, listen and write. Listen and write. So set an appointment. Be still and worship. Pray and read. Then listen for the voice, the shepherd who is ahead of you, and write. So, so you're, you're studying the passage or you're praying about something. Write, write about it. Write about that passage. What do you feel God is saying to you in that prayer time? What do you feel God is saying through his word? Write about it. Here's what's going to happen. I'm telling you. Listen, if you just value the voice of God, this is what's going to happen. You're going to move. You're writing. You're listening. You're writing. You're going to move from writing in the first person to writing in the third person. You're going to start and you're going to say, well, I think God is trying to say to me in this passage that, that he, is, he is gracious and faithful that he is always with me. He will never fail me and I can trust in him. You just listen and continue to value it and, and position yourself and write and listen to the shepherd. You'll move from that. You'll, you'll, I think God is saying in this passage, I am faithful. I am loving. I am will. Uh, you can trust me. You'll move from the first person to the third person if you listen and write. Habakkuk 2.2 says, the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain. That's why you write it down, to make it plain. 
hey church, let's, let's go through a season of identifying and eliminating everything that defiles and distracts. Let's get back in step. Let's get back in a rhythm, seeking the face and the voice of God. Amen? Let's bow our heads across the worship center. Let me pray with you. Some of you are here today. And man, there's so many distractions, competing voices. So much maybe in your life that, that has pulled you away. And today, you need to, you, maybe you've never heard that, that God wants to actually lead you in life. That he wants to have a personal and intimate relationship with you. Maybe you've never heard that. And today I want to encourage you to take a step of faith and to let him become, Jesus, become the leader of your life. Maybe for some of you, the weapons of mass distraction have got you. At one point he was leading, he was out front, but you've been distracted. And you need, and you need to get back in rhythm today. And again, start to attune and listen to the voice of God.